going to be looking at some revelation stuff tonight, and we're going to be looking at some stuff about, you know, God's got a plan, y'all. Think about it. He's got an awesome plan. And, you know, we're getting close to the, uh, 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 the church age fixing to go out of here. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at. You know, we went through the, uh, the, the earth went through the, the pre-Adamite Lucifer's fall and all of that. And then we see the deliverance of the Hebrew children, praise God, and went through the innocence and, uh, you know, Adam and Eve uh, dispensations and some of that. And then we went through old Noel and all of the stuff that was going on there. And uh, we pressed on down, praise God. And then we see the deliverance of the Hebrew children, the flies, the plagues, and all that stuff in Egypt and everything, and then we see the law, the Ten Commandments come about, amen? And then we get into the church age, hallelujah, praise God of mercy and grace. Well, we're right at the church age and the millennium, well, the church age and the tribulation and the millennium. The church age, we're right there, we fix them, get out of here. And uh, I'm excited about that. But God's got a plan, amen? And uh, this sinful career of this earth as we know it now is going to be gone. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. And we're going to look uh, a little bit in some of it and see what God says about it. In Revelation 21, that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, revelation there. But I want to look at number six in Revelation. Let's look and see what the Word says. It is done. What's done? Well, it ain't all done yet, but it's fixing to be done. Amen. But this is God's plan. It's going to be done. And so we're going to look at it here, uh, some of the uh, plan that he has that's going to be done. In Revelation 21, 3 and 7, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle is God, uh, of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Now I'm here to tell you right now, when we dwell with our Lord, the tabernacle is going to come down. It's going to be new heaven, renovated, new heaven and earth like we can't even imagine. And God himself and our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come down and they're going to dwell with us upon this earth for eternity, y'all. And uh, so let's just look a little bit more here in, in God's wonderful word. I love it. And God, oh, I just love this right here. I, I, I quote this a lot and you need to too. This will give you encouragement. Amen. The Bible says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things will be passed away. Think about that, y'all. Can you imagine no more sorrow, no more pain? Some of the things that we pray for in here tonight won't be. We won't have to worry about it no more. Amen. That's going to be an exciting time. i tell you right now. Uh, this right, this verse right here is, is is so much encouragement in that verse right there. You need to stick it on the wall of your house, you know, because God is going to do this like He said He would. You know, God is real. The earth out there declares His glory out there. You know, man tries to come up and put all other religions equal with God, and it won't work because God is the Creator. God is the one who, he is the ancient one. He's eternal. In the beginning was God, amen. And God, just like he said in his word, he is God. And beside him, there is no other God. All of the prophecy that we see has been, uh, uh, that, that has been fulfilled up to this time has come to pass. So God's word is truth and it's uh, God speaking to his people, amen. There's documentation and proof here. This ain't just a little fairy tale book, y'all. This is real. God is real. And there's documentation. And there's archaeology finds that they find in all over Israel all the time. I love archaeological stuff. I want to go over and find a Roman sword in an old 2,000-year-old coin, a couple of things like that, you know. But I'm here to tell you. All this stuff is being found. They found King David's where he lived. They, they see the menorah on certain things that they find, stones. There's all evidence that this land over there is the Hebrew children's land, and it was prophesied all these things was going to happen, and it just proves God is real, and he's alive, and he is the creator of everything. And the world, 
might as well get it together because they're going to bow to him one day that uh, thinks that uh, they, they got their own gods. Let's go right here and look and uh, uh, look a bit further. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. I believe every bit of that statement, don't you? These words are true, and these words are faithful. And God said it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Did God say in this word he's coming back? Yes, he's coming back. The world said, Ah, oh, he's been saying that for 2,000 years. That's the first thing they'll tell you. Yeah, he did. He told Noah it's going to rain too, and it rained, didn't it? Amen. Let's go a little bit further here and look. And he said unto me, it is done. There's the one we want to look at there. What's done? God's plan. He has an awesome plan. He has purpose for each one of us here now. But God has a plan. And the final result, so we're going to look at a little bit of it here tonight. Look here. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end I will give unto him. That is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. God's an awesome God. He gives us that eternal life with him if we want it. It's a free gift. Did you know that? You don't pay nothing for it. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. Look here. But it says, it is done. We're going to look at some of the things uh, uh, that's done and going to be done. And uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now, we as Christians have our part to do, don't we? We have to uh, endure to the end. And I want to tell you, Everybody in here has a roller coaster, don't you? You ride that roller coaster, don't you? Sometimes you're on top and shouting and praising God, and all of a sudden that roller coaster go down in the valley, don't it? And sometimes down there, that's when you really start growing down there, though. But when you're in, down there in the valley, you're going through trials and tribulations. You know, when you become a Christian, you don't think that everything's going to be hunky-dory for you. When you become a Christian, things are going to happen. The devil's going to come at you and try to discourage you and tear you down and do things to you to get you back uh, where he had you. And I tell you right now, you're a child of the king. You need to stand your ground. The Bible says those who endure to the end. So you and I are accountable for our lifestyle and what we're doing with God. And one of the major things we do with God is get in God's word and study and read it, and we see our faith grow supernaturally because you get in God's word and he'll give us that uh, amount of faith that we need. I'll tell you right now, we got to endure to the end, y'all, and it is a struggle. It is a battle all the time. But I'm going to tell you right now, I see my sisters, uh, my sisters over here, some of my brothers on fire, bubbling and everything. It ain't always like that. But when you ain't on fire, bubbling and everything, you got to stand because he's still there with you. He's still there with you if you ain't feeling good or feeling bad or whatever. He said he'll never forsake you. He said he'll never leave you. He is still there with you. Amen. And I, I got to admit, man, it feels good to feel good. It feels good to come in God's house and get filled up with, with his holy word. Amen. And go out them doors, boy, you're bubbling. Amen. And all of a sudden, uh, during the week, something happens and everything. And it's like, man, what happened? But God's still with you. Regardless of what you're his child and the lifestyle that you're in with him and the discipline that you, you discipline yourself as your responsibility and accountability, he's still with you. Amen. And they're going to be sometimes you might have to go out in the desert. You ever been in the desert? I have. I've been there. Where you at, God? Did Jesus go in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights? Amen. Did Moses go in the literal desert for 40 years? Amen. Think about it. So, but Moses stood his ground, didn't he? Amen. Jesus stood his ground. We as Christians stand our ground because he's still there. He is with us. He's holding us. Amen. I'll tell you right now, we just got to remember when you pray that he's still there with you. He's not going to leave you. As long as you do your part and continue to endure to the end and follow him, he is with you. And we got to remember that in these days, uh, trying days that, that we're having uh, in the worlds today and everything. Let's go a little bit further right here and look in Peter. Renovation, uh, this is going to be done too. The renovation of heaven and earth. We see it in Hebrews uh, 1, uh, 10 and 12, but we're going to look at it in Second Peter here. Well, wait a minute. What am I doing in 22, 3? Oh, yeah. No more curse. We definitely got to read this one right here. Look at here, y'all. 
There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Is this going to be an awesome thing when the curse of this earth, because of Adam and Eve, you know, and the devil, he fell, of course. And then here come Adam, and he fell right off the bat. He listened to the devil, brought sin into society, the hum human part. Amen. Think about it. And so the curse is even on the land out there. Well, I'm here to tell you right there, the Bible says there shall be no more curse. I tell you right now, when our Lord uh, gets the renovation and gets it, the plan that he has done, the curse is going to be gone. You know, think about the people, uh, how fortunate they're going to be when uh, the angel comes down at the millennium reign and takes one chain and puts the devil in the pits for a thousand years. Now, how fortunate do you think those people are going to be on the earth then? Because they're not going to be tempted and can't say the devil made me do it, can they? They might have to say the flesh made me do it. Uh-huh, the flesh is just as evil too. Think about it. you got to crucify the flesh just like you come against the devil too. Amen? All of it. Let's look and see. Uh, but I like that right there. There shall be no more curse. Now look at, look at the renovation of the earth, uh, the heavens and the earth that God's going to do. You know, God, uh, he destroyed the earth that time, well, the pre-Adamite, that's another thing I won't get into, but we see where the devil messed up and God uh, done some things big time. And then we see where the recreation, Adam and Eve come on the scene, and they was evil, man's heart was evil, and so God destroyed through Noel and the ark, but he saved eight souls, didn't he? Now think about that. Now, God's fixing to do something else. He's fixing to, and for this. Uh, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. The heavens were of old. And the, were, and, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, let's look right here. Whereby by the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Y'all see that? You know, there's two floods in the Bible. I won't get into the pre Adamite end of it. I'm going to look at Noah's right now. But I want to tell you right now, God's an awesome God. He knows how to take care of things and handle things, doesn't he? I want you to look right here and see. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. Now, I want to tell you something. God destroyed the earth how? By water last time with Noah, okay? And what did God do? You know, I hate that so. I mean, I, I love it. When I see it, it's God. What did God do? He told man, I'm not going to destroy earth again. He put a bow in the air, didn't he? A rainbow. And the evils of the world want to take that beautiful uh, rainbow that's God's and always do something with it, but that's okay. You go out there and look at a stone and everything, and you look and see that bow, that's God Almighty. And that's a covenant he made with mankind not to destroy the earth again with, with the water. But this time it's going to be fire, okay? And the fire is going to renovate. It's going to do everything, y'all. It's going to, I mean, all, everything's going to be burned up. Chairs, us, if, if you're here, I mean, we're going to be in heaven with the Lord. But just think of all this stuff that we see out there that's got the earth being contaminated now. Did you know that? It's going to be burned up, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth that we can't imagine. And there won't be no curse there. It'll be the new heaven and the earth that God uh, wanted in the first place, y'all, until mankind messed up. But I'm here to tell you right now, it's going to be something that we can't even imagine how glorious it's going to be. And we're going to dwell with the Lord for eternity. We're going to see him, by the way, and fellowship and praise and worship him. And uh, he is our God for eternity, and we'll serve him uh, for eternity. Amen. And it's going to be a it's going to be a wonderful place. Earth, guess what? Won't be no curse. Amen. It'll be the new heavens and and the new earth. Uh, all of it, no curse. Think about that. It's going to be an awesome thing. I, I can't even get into the details of what it's going to be like. But look right here, what it says. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is of the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Six days he created the heavens and earth. He rested on the seventh, didn't he? Let's go a little further right here. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. 
And I'm telling you right now, people out there on the Internet and people of the world, our God, if he promised something in this word, it's going to come to pass just like he said it would. And it's already been proven time and time again. He said Jesus, his son, was coming, and he come, didn't he? He was prophesied thousands of years before he even come. This whole Bible is about his son, Jesus. Starts in Genesis, comes over here to Revelation. Amen? Think about it. <coughs> God's an awesome God, isn't he? I told you all about the time I, God told me to preach on Jesus, and I got to study, and I was a rookie at the time, and I was studying and reading in God's Word, and I said, well, Lord, the whole Bible's about Jesus. <laughs> I couldn't contain it all. <coughs> Amen. But it was an awesome thing. Look at here. The, not, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and some men count slackness, but it is long-suffering to us, uh, uh, us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. Now, God does not want anybody to perish. Did y'all know that? Did you know our God wants everybody to be saved? And he gave everybody the opportunity as free moral agent, free man or woman to make the, the right choice to be saved. <clears throat> it's God's will that every one of us, everybody out there be saved. Everybody. But it's their choice. And so the world says, the Bible says, broad is a road that leads to destruction. There's more people going down the broad road than go down the narrow road that leads to heaven. Did y'all know that? And uh, so all of those people out there is making poor choices. Amen? Think about it. And uh, <clears throat> usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everybody to be saved, but it's their choice. It's a free gift. They don't earn it. They don't work for it. They just say, yes, Lord, forgive me and confess with a mouth, and they can be saved. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Uh, think about it. The Galilean marriage. That's the one we was talking about the other night. We're trying to get that film. And uh, it shows that Galilean marriage. It's right in that Jesus said it, the Lord's Supper, and said, drink this cup, I won't drink with it again. Well, the Galilean marriage, they do that with his bride, amen. And the, and the, and the, the bridegroom in the Galilean marriage uh, goes and builds on to his daddy's house and said, to come back to get his bride, okay? Well, Jesus said, in my father's house, many mansions. And, I, and I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I'm at, you may be with me also. Think about that. He's going to prepare for his bride. The church is the bride of Christ. Amen. Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, and the body of Christ, I'm telling you, God's fixing to come back for his bride, and we're his bride. Amen. Think about it, y'all. It's an awesome thing. God's showing us all these good things in his holy word. Let's see right here what it says in this. Seeing then that all these things shall be uh, dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Godliness. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. God's going to renovate the heavens and the earth. Renovation of heaven and earth, it's going to happen, amen. But it's not going to affect us because we'll have eternal bodies like Jesus, amen. Think about it, y'all. Let's go right here. Now, in 1 Corinthians, we're talking about all rebels will be put down. Earth will be turned back over to our God. But let's look. Uh, I think i got another scripture here. Yeah. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, that's what we're looking for, ain't it? We're looking for a new heaven. We're looking for a new earth where dwelleth righteousness. That's going to be our king. Amen. He is our righteousness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Corinthians, then cometh the end, and he shall, and he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and authority and power. Then come then, Jesus is going to say, hey, uh, here, this is to my heavenly Father. This earth has been uh, cleansed of all rebellion and everything, and He gives it back to the kingdom of kings. I mean, God Almighty, and God Almighty, 
comes down here and dwells with us. Look here. Let's go a little bit further. For he must reign till he has put down all enemies under his feet. Who is that? That's Jesus. Amen. Y'all see? Let's go a little bit further right here. And look in. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Is that an enemy of mankind? Don't y'all hate death? Don't you hate it? It's a horrible, horrible thing. It's a curse, by the way. You know, it wouldn't meant that mankind die when they was in the garden and in the dispensation of innocence, innocence in the Garden of Eden. They didn't know no sin. They didn't know this naked, did they? They would have lived for eternity and never died. But they sinned. You see what happened? Abel was the next righteous man that I see in God's word. Cain killed Abel. Let's go a little bit further right here. And look and see, all rebels will be put down. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. For he has put all things under his feet, but he saith all things are put under him. It is manifested that he is ex accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So it's going to be done. Y'all see these things? It's going to be done. It's, it's happening. It's going to be an awesome thing for his children. Amen. And we are his children. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here. And look, man is going to be purged of all possibility of rebellion. Look right here uh, how that's going to happen. Uh, but the fearful, the unbelieving, <coughs> the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, <coughs> and adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, all rebellion that's going to be upon this earth is going to be put out in, in a place called hell. So there won't be no rebellion anymore. Amen? It's going to be purged of all possibility of rebellion. Think about that. Let's look right here in Revelation 20, 11 through 15. It talks about the rebels will be judged and confined into hell. All rebellion. Do we have rebellion going on in this world today? Oh, yes, we do, don't we? Yes, ma'am, sister. Let me go back and let's look which one. And when all things shall be subdued, is that the one you're talking about? That one right there? The, but the fearful and the murderers and, the, yeah, we'll be in heaven with the Lord. And all this right here is going to happen in 21.8. Uh, we're, we're raptured out after chapter 4. We're in heaven. We're with God. Okay? And we're going to help God when, after chapter 4. When we come back during the second advent, we'll be here for a 1,000 years to help rule and reign. And some of this stuff we're talking about right here is going to be, uh, this next scripture will tell you, uh, Yes, in Revelations it said hereafter. That means hereafter the church is raptured up from chapter 4 up until chapter 19. The church is not uh, uh, down here. It's with the Lord. Amen. Think about it. And we're going to do the millennium reign. Let's go right here in the second advent. This, we're in heaven, and this right here, I saw a great white throne. This is the great white throne judgment. We get raptured out a thousand years before this takes place, okay? We're, we're in the millennium to rule and reign and help the Lord get rid of all rebellion. And then all of a sudden, the great white throne judgment is going to come forth. God himself is going to come down from the third heaven and dwell. And the great white throne judgment will be him calling the dead people that's in hell and the people that rebelled against him and Israel and all that. They will be called up and judged and the second death will be when they're cast back into hell for eternity. See, we won't, we're going to go in the first resurrection, okay? And uh, they, these people here is a thousand years later, they're resurrected out of the seas and the hell and all of them places. You see that? 
Let's go a little bit further right here. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, think about all the bad works and stuff that put them into hell because they, the main thing, they didn't receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, let's go a little bit further right here. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, this is a great white throne judgment. It happens after the millennium reign, and we're in the millennium reign. We get raptured a thousand years before this takes place, okay? We're in, we in heaven with the Lord. We come back and rule and reign with the Lord for the thousand years to get rid of all rebellion. And then God himself will come back down to the earth and then the great white throne judgment. That's what we're talking about right here. Let's look right here and see. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And those people's called out of hell. They ain't gonna be, their names ain't going to be in that book. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. In Ephesians 3, 9 through uh, uh, 11, it talked about God's original plan, free wills in the universe, and God's uh, form of government. That's going to be an awesome thing. Our, he's a God that's true justice, amen, and government. Look here. And to make all men see that this the fellowship of the mystery, which was from the beginning of the world, hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heaven in heavenly places might be known by the church the, the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he had purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm telling you, all of these things is going to be done and we are at the point of seeing it. I got one other scripture. The Lord, No, I got two other scriptures. The Lord gave me an extra scripture tonight. But look here. God's throne and headquarters will be moved from the third heaven established on earth for eternity. Think about it. He's in heaven in a perfect place up there. Amen. But yet he wants to come and dwell among his creation and he wants to live, be down here for eternity on this earth. You ever thought about that? Think about it. Here I am wanting to go to heaven, and he's fixing to come back down here with us. <laughs> look, look right here. And there shall be no more night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And that's us. Now, I've got one scripture the Lord gave me here right before we come uh, tonight. No, two scriptures. Isaiah 46. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. He is the true living God we're talking about here. He's not a created idol or image out there somewhere. He is real. Amen. Now let's look at this verse 10 here. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Now, what we're talking about, some of the things that's going to be done. Now, some of the, all the things ain't done yet, but they fixing to be done what God has said. Declaring the end from the beginning and the ancient times, the times that are yet are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now, I'm here to tell you right now, God said he's going to do all these things we looked at here tonight. He will do them just like God. All of the things uh, that he said he would do in his holy word, a lot of them's already been done, okay? But we still got a ways to go in some of it. We got the thousand year millennium reign. We got the great tribulation that's coming up here. And uh, we're going to be with the Lord, praise God, and, uh, and dwell with him for, for eternity. Oh, man, I'm telling you, we got something to look forward to. Amen. This next phase is going to be exciting for us Christians because we're going to have a 
glorified body, immortal body like Jesus. And we're going to come back with him to rule and reign for a thousand years. But the, the, the really the great exciting thing for the church right now, we fix to leave here. And I, I believe that. And if the world out there don't want to talk about that and, and, uh, and, and uh, preach on some of those things or whatever, the Bible tells it plain. It's plain. It's his holy word. Amen. And I believe it from the front to the back. So y'all be ready. Be looking for it. Amen. Because just like that, it can happen. And uh, I'm excited how what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it. Uh, the plan that God has for us is awesome, y'all. It's awesome. Think about it. Let's have a body bow your head, please. talking to the folks on the internet. Thank you for being with us so much. I pray that this word just come over the internet and the airways and touch your heart. And if you want to be a part of this uh, great plan and purpose that God has, and it's all going to be fulfilled and done because his holy word does not lie, I pray that you would just ask him to come in your heart because he loves you. He loves you no matter what you've done. He's a God that has mercy and grace. I pray you'll call on him. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'll touch everybody in here. I bind the devil from stealing the word that, uh, or anything that was accomplished here tonight in Jesus' name. And I apply the blood of Jesus over everybody's mind in here tonight. Uh, and God, I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that we put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith that we take up.